Muslims need to stop simping. And that's a very general statement. What do I mean by that? We currently live in a time where even just talking about the natural roles that men and women have that Allah has ordained us to have and has designed us to be, whether I like it or not, as a man, I am the protector and provider for my wife. I am the leader of the household. Compare it to women and they have different roles and duties. They're the ones who maintain the house. They're the ones that can be the good mother for my children. They have different du duties and roles that have been ordained to them, which is different to men. And when you call this out, when you say this, even as a Muslim, astaghfirullah, but even when you say this as a Muslim, you're shamed in a corner. It's like being a toddler, right? They put you into a corner, they, they grab the finger out, they wag it and be like, no, 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 you can't say that. You can't say that. Your toxic masculinity, your toxic masculinity, you're a misogynist. This is what they say. They weaponize this against you. As a Muslim, the mere existence of being a man is weaponized against you in the West. The mere existence of being a feminine woman is literally weaponized against you. Young women are now being told to go out and chase the bag, be independent, be the career woman. Go out, go to college, go to uni, engage in the disgusting stuff. You're a teenager now. You can do stuff behind your parents' back, you know. Live life to the fullest. This is all they say. This is the liberal way, right? You're not hurting anyone unless, um, you know, you can do whatever you want unless you're not hurting anyone. This is, the, this is their thinking. And Islam comes in and says, no, that's not the case, right? And what do we see today? You know, I, 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 I don't agree with Red Pill. But sometimes, when I look at some of the people in Red Pill speaking, and I don't agree with physectomies, family is important. Red Pill does not entwine of Islam. It's a man-made concept. But when I used to be attracted to the Red Pill was when it was debunking feminism. Now, Islam is the perfect middle ground. It's not a feminist religion. It's not a red pill religion, a black pill, whatever these pills are anymore. It's a religion based on truth, the haq, and most importantly, hikmah, wisdom. There are certain rulings and rules, like it makes so much sense. Looking at the, the way that the world is going into now, that men are the, the protectors of women. It makes so much sense. These Women who, going, who are going out half naked because it's happening and we're not just going to sugarcoat it and say, well, they can do whatever they want. You know, you know, I can't really say anything living in a, a liberal country. I can't really say anything, right? You can do whatever you want. Sure, whatever. You do what you like. But as Muslims trying to entwine feminism with Islam, it, it, you're, they, they, don't, they don't fit. Islam is not a feminist religion. It's not a pleasing, ear-pleasing religion. It's easy to understand, of course, but it's not something that's meant to please you. If Islam was meant to please you, why would it say no alcohol? Why would it say no zinna? Because if it were to please you, this would be accepted. This will be okay, but it's hikmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained that men are the providers, the protectors. Just saying that statement in Western society, you get outruled as being some toxic masculine person. You know, I, I, I saw um, a video of Candace Owens, may Allah guide her, and she was talking about this, right? She was talking about this, um, about how men, men's weakness is women. This is what Islam actually talks about. And I gained some respect. The fact that she could go out and not cause a problem, not go out there and try to essentially push this feminist ideology, but push the natural traditional roles that men and women have, which have always worked for our history. But now, suddenly we all want to change when the pioneer of the original feminism condemns it in her other book that no one talks about, because they all talk about feminist mystique, but they don't, call, they don't talk about the second wave, right? 
which is exactly happening today. We have women going into sexual identity politics who entwine with Islam, sorry, entwine with feminism. So as you, so you as a Muslim woman entwining feminism is now by the default, astaghfirullah, entwining the rainbow community, entwining this community now, that entwining all of the communities now, the communities that don't even fit and is not even permissible within Islam. This is what you're entwining it with. And yeah, back to Candace Owens, sorry, I just forgot what I was talking about there. But Candace Owens herself was talking about, you know, women being the weakness for men. But most importantly, that it's like a yin and yang. We need each other. And men being the leaders isn't something that like is like shamed. Because now it's shamed for you to even be a man. Oh, you're telling your wife what to do? How dare you? They try and, first of all, gaslight you, right? They gaslight you to say what you're doing is bad. Then they gaslight you even further to be like, well, she's an independent queen. She can do whatever she wants. You know, this is why you see these women now saying that, you know, twerking is therapeutic. Let's just be honest. You're not doing it for that. Or they, they go into OnlyFans. They have all these guys simping for them. There was a, there was like a post once of, stuff for like came up didn't mean to see i didn't search for it voluntarily just came up you know how it is on twitter unfortunately but i went on there and i saw one of the posts that the muslim women did and what they sorry not muslim women sorry one of the women did or a man commenting on it whatever it was and it said that one of the people that bought them a house was one of their only fan subscribers an only fan subscriber working hard for their own paid money is buying or, or funding for their house and it's 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 not even like shameful anymore i'm 20 believe it or not but the younger generation it's different it's a different culture now if you're seen with the only fans girl you're going to be pushed congratulations you did well how did you do that wow she's beautiful how did you get with the only fans girl it's not even seen as shameful anymore it's gone past that point that shaitan has just glorified it. It's glorified now. You're with the person that slept with everyone. Well done. That's an accomplishment. Accomplishment my foot. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to be crude. But anyone can impregnate anyone, right? Because you're, you have all these women that therefore that defines who you are as a man. It's ridiculous. Oh, wow, well, you have a woman. Wow, you have another human being. Wow, you've impregnated this other human being. You've impregnated many, so therefore you're good. Doesn't make any sense. No, no, I'm not trying to be crude, but anyone can do that, right? It's not hard, right? Let's just like get two people in a room, there a go, you've done it, you've breeded. Congratulations. That's what it is. But they make it an accomplishment, like you've accomplished something. What have you accomplished? The real accomplishment is about being a good father, a good mother, being a good parent, a good family person, being a good Muslim, most importantly. You entwining and being entwined with this, thinking that, you know, oh, I have to, you know, uh, if my wife tells me to do this, I have to do it. What? Like, it's so stupid. Like, it's like, but I love my wife so much and I want to do everything I can for her. And I'm going to... Um, you know, I'm going to give her flowers and chocolates and everything, which is okay, no problem. You can be romantic, but that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to give them everything and they provide nothing for me. This is what it is. This is what it's being promoted as. And it's worse when it comes to the courts. When it comes to court, you have people using the Quran verses against you in court. You're putting yourself in that situation by being a simp. By having these these women use Quran verses against you, may Allah may Allah bring justice to these men who unfortunately don't have the backbone to say, "Well, what are you doing?" They have the backbone to really have an authoritative stance. Men are meant to be the authority, whether I like it or not. I'm a man, right? I'm twenty. I'm getting older. Maybe you're you have kids watching this. You're married. You have to really think, are you trying to please the people? What's the point of trying to please the people when you know it's destructive? What's the point anymore? What's the point of trying to please people that won't benefit you, that won't help you, that won't give me money, 
these aren't people that are helping my wife, my kids, my family. The only one that will is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which has ordained us objectively, whether I like it or not, that my role is, as a man is to provide. Then they try and shame women that, oh, you cooking, cleaning is not good. Why not? What's so wrong with a woman maintaining the house? Oh, it's, it's, it's like, it's, 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 it's what? You, they don't have any valuable reasoning against it. All they say is, well, but women aren't just that. Of course women aren't just that. But women have different roles that men ha don't have, right? Women go through a hormonal cycle. Men don't have that. Imagine having a woman lead. The, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, literally talked about nations have women lead and it won't work. Good luck, America. Look what happened to Bangladesh. And then people say, oh, but, 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 why are you trying to question, like, you already know Islam's the truth. You've seen other ideologies. They don't make sense. And yet you look belatedly at Islam and you say, how can this fit with my worldview? How can this benefit? Islam is not there just for that. It's ridiculous that these, these simps are allowing this. I'm sorry, it is. And there was the video on TikTok uh, went viral, someone called Iron Man. Fitness, right? It's a fitness thing. At first, I watched the video and it was like, women should not get education. At first, I was like, this is, this is, in, this is wrong, right? Women need education and there's certain scenarios in the West. But then I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, maybe he's onto something. Look at the West right now. Look at the West. Honestly, tell yourself, look at the West. What education is going to benefit them? What education is really going to benefit your daughter? Do you know what happens the first week you go to uni? It's the most degenerate, disgusting thing. Yet, yeah, no, they want to have an education. Oh, go around, sleep around. Oh, but they want to have an education. I've, I've studied PhDs. There's other ways of doing it. You can do it online. But no, no, no. I want to go to uni. Get in debt. Haram, by the way. No, yeah. Did you know that interest is haram? Oh, no. But I'm trying to get an education. I'm trying to go do this. And this is the only, only way. Say, you know what? You know what? Say that to Allah. I dare you. Say it to Allah. Stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, this is the only way. I disobeyed you, my Lord. I waged war against you because I, I, I just wanted money. I wanted to explore and have fun. How many people really go to uni to really study? None. They get an unnecessary debt. You're in the most disgusting environment. Well, and what's good there? It's a breeding ground for feminism, breeding ground for degeneracy. <laughs> There's nothing good. And I thought at first it would be good if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor. And I'm thinking, why? What's the point of throwing all your morals away? Trying to avoid all this haram, putting yourself in this disgusting environment. Oh, just to say you're a doctor. Who cares? We live, what, 70, 80 years? At the end of the day, I'd rather please Allah than please the people. That's why I'm making this video. This is probably going to be the most triggering video. People are going to type away and say, how dare you say that about women? Don't come at me. Come at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come at your Lord, who's ordained men to be the protectors and providers, who's ordained women to have different roles, and this is not wrong. For example, as a man, I will never have the same connection to my kids that my wife would have. I'm okay with that. That's a perfectly good thing. I understand. I might not have the deep emotional connection that my wife might have. The best moments, and I remember I used to go to college, when I went to college, yeah, I'm talking about don't go to college, and I went to college. I'm, I'm not a hypocrite, this was before I was close to Islam. But even then, um, I was in a, a class, and um, one, of the, one of the teachers there was talking about the best moments of her life, right? And she had her own business, and they combined it with the college, as a whole lot, long subject, but she was talking about how one of the best moments of her life was when she had a child and she had a whole presentation. She did like a theater thing and it was all about being a mother. Imagine that, imagine that, right? 
And I remember just like noticing that the women in the class, like you could tell we're hitting them a bit different, right? It hit them a bit different and all the background noise, but you can tell that people, but anyway, back onto the subject. Yeah. So they had, um, she had the presentation and she said the best thing in the best moment of my life was being a mother. And I gained some new respect for her. Like this woman, and you could tell that she was different. Like she wasn't focused career orientated. She went to uni. She said that she never paid off her debt. And she talked about one of the best moments being that. And it even talked of her ironically, right? This is legit. I literally talked to her about this, about this. And and it was talking about how people my age don't really go up to people. And I say it's because they're afraid of what someone may say, right? And it was also entwined. I don't know how this got into the conversation, but it was about even like relationships. That people don't approach people on the street anymore because they're afraid that they're, oh, something may happen or I may say something wrong. That's a whole different conversation. But the only reason I'm bringing that in is just to show you that once you have a child as a woman, it changes you. And, you know, don't take my word for it if you don't want a misogynist telling you this. Misogynist, right? Don't take my word. Take, take the word of other women. Take the word of your own mother, your own grandmother. You see the relationship they have. It's magical. Imagine being with the same partner for years. That's, that's beauty. That's beautiful. And they don't have to go out there. And they never had the appeal to be an independent woman. Even my own mother, may Allah bless her. She doesn't. She doesn't agree with feminism. You know, it's, it's it's just um. It's really a sad reality. But hopefully, this does do any benefit. I just feel like I ranted for like. <sighs> yeah, but no, this is a serious thing, man. May Allah protect us.